one way of resolving the oligopoly problem is by colluding to form a cartel. So we'll all get together, three or four or five of us, and we will centrally coordinate our behavior in a way that probably reduces price competition among us and, and maximizes the industry profits. Okay? So we're going to behave like a monopolist. We're going to, do, we're going to behave as though we were a monopolist and maximize the industry profits. And that may not be that hard. Given, given, you know, total, total demand for oil in the United, in the, in the world, and the total supply of oil in the world, you know, clever, clever guys with, with models and some money to collect data can figure out what the profit maximizing price for oil, a barrel of oil is likely to be, you know, over the next six months to a year, uh, with some reasonable accuracy. And, you know, we know from this last OPEC meeting that it's somewhere around 80 bucks a barrel for the industry as a whole. But, again, if the firms in the cartel have different cost structures or face different patterns of demand, so, for example, um, China has a very different pattern of demand than, say, uh, Canada or, or the United States. I mean, China is a very high growth, fast industrialization. India is another situation. High growth, fast industrialization, big demand for oil. Um, you know, the United States is in, is in recession. Demand for oil is fairly low uh, because because it's used as an industrial input, and industrial processes are not at their peak. Uh, we're not growing. We're growing at what about two percent a year at this point. China's growing at something like eight percent a year. So you know the differences in demand patterns could be very substantial, and the elasticities of demand between China consumers of oil and U.S. consumers of oil are probably very different. Could be a simple matter of climate. Oil is also used for heating oil. Okay. So, so lots of different factors can affect the demand side. So, and so it may not be possible to set a single price that's optimal for everybody together. I mean, that is optimal for every individual firm, and is optimal for everybody together. It may be very difficult to do that. What happens if you do it anyway? Well, the, uh, you know, so we set a price, and the the. Uh, uh, See if we can draw this. So we've got a, a world market demand curve, and we've got a bunch of different marginal cost curves. So here's a low cost firm, and there's a high cost firm. Okay, the, and here's the marginal revenue curve. So the, the, the low-cost firm wants a price that looks like that. The high-cost firm wants a price that looks like that. If you set the price at the low-cost firm's price preference, then the, and, and by the way, so the production levels would be this and this. The high cost firm will produce, uh, <coughs> will want to produce less to maximize its profits and the low price firm will want to produce a bit more. Okay? Do you understand how we're doing profit maximization here? We're setting marginal revenue equal to marginal cost and figuring out the price from the demand curve. And my, my, uh, my geometry is not very good, I'm afraid. So let's say that we split the difference and we set a price right here. Okay. The the guys that have the uh, the low cost guys will want to produce. Well, they both want to cheat. The the high cost firm will want to sell less than that, but the low cost firm will want to sell more at that higher price. And so uh, if the total quantity that you're trying to get in the marketplace is this, the, the, um, the let's see how we get this. The, the low-cost firm will produce more than it, no, the low-cost firm will, will yeah, uh, will want to maximize its profits and produce more than, than this. And the high-cost guy will uh, want to 
want to produce less because the price is lower than his preferred price. Right? So the problem is you can't, you really, you get an incentive to cheat on the deal. There's an incentive between, of, of, of at least one firm to cheat. Well, if they're both happy or cheating, why not just let them? Because, you because that's competition, you see. That's competition. And they don't, what they were trying to do here is we're trying to suppress competition, that the two firms are colluding with each other in order to maximize profits for the, for the industry as a whole. And that's, you know, that's the cartel problem, is that, is that if you have different cost structures and different preferred profit-maximizing prices, at least some firms are going to have an incentive to cheat. And we see this all the time in OPEC. If you watch the OPEC uh, production rules, you know, each firm, each country that's a member of OPEC gets to produce a quota. And that's the sum of all the quotas adds up to the Q sub star that I drew here. Right? But some are going to produce, are going to say, well, the price is higher than I, than I, uh, or I'm sorry, the price is, the price is lower than I prefer, so I'm going to produce more because I need to get more revenues to, you know, run my army or whatever it is or pad my, my Swiss bank account. And, uh, and the additional supply that comes on the market from that cheating drives the price down to his preferred price because he would prefer to produce more than, than uh, at a lower price because that's his profit maximizing output. So we see this all the time. And when, when OPEC comes out with quotas, it says, okay, you know, uh, Nigeria will produce this many barrels and Saudi Arabia will produce this many barrels and Kuwait and Iran and, you know, et cetera, Mexico, uh, Venezuela, um, and then they all start producing, they all start cheating if the price is set too high. And so you wind up having this discipline problem. Similarly, we've seen uh, situations where, uh, where um, well, let me, let, me, let me carry on because I've got it here. So here's an example. This is a real, a real world example. This is a company called Oberon, which uh, is in the industry of, Powder, producing, uh, providing powdered brass. The CEO of the company, who was a government informant. Anybody seen the movie The Informant? That's about price fixing in ADM. Uh, that's that's not a cartel issue, but it's actually it is a bit because you can see them colluding with the Japanese producers to fix the world price for sucrose. I think it was or something. I can't remember. Anyway, so here we've got a cartel where uh, where it, one firm. Uh, Oberon is accused of cheating by lowering prices secretly to big customers, individual customers. You know, we've, here, we, we've got an industrial sales process. You send out a sales force. Maybe there's a, a, a six to eight month, ten month, twelve month sales cycle where you know you're making, you're bringing in your sales engineers and you're making the pitch and you're describing the process. It's not like a consumer, a retail consumer product. This is, this is an industrial product. And so, uh, you know, and so there's opportunities to make deals with individual customers. You're not just putting stuff up on the shelf and marking the price. So they were making deals with individual customers, and um, the, uh, the lower prices were being noticed by, uh, by other companies, by rivals, and saying that if, they, if, if you guys are going to lower your prices, we're going to start dropping our prices too, and the deal's done. It's a dead deal. This was actually brought into a, a, an antitrust cartel case uh, before the, uh, I think it was before the European Commission. Um, and because of this informant uh, who was the CEO of the company, uh, there, was, uh, there was quite a fairly large fine involved. But that's the cartel problem. That once you set a price, there's an, some firms at least have an incentive to cheat. Now, the cheating is easiest if the, if, if, if a firm can avoid detection. Um, and so the, the easier it is to avoid detection, the more policing power you need to have. So that's, that's kind of what's where, the, where the cartel is caught. Depending on, on how easy it is to cheat and how damaging to the cartel ar ar arrangement cheating is, the stronger your policing power has to be for the cartel. Right? And if it's an illegal cartel, which, many of the, which some of them at least are, you know, that policing power has to be secret. You can't, you can't just sort of send in the troops. 